Welcome to worship. We're glad that you are joining us. I'm Pastor Connie Markle, and this is West Branch United Methodist Church, West Branch, Iowa. Thank you for coming. I've been asked to make an announcement that the church will not have a garage sale this spring, this year, so please don't bring anything to the church, and they say thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us join our hearts in prayer. O oh, holy God, you are a God of surprises. And today as we gaze up into the clouds, remind us that we are standing on holy ground. Help us prepare our hearts to let you in completely. Help us see your vision. Help us hear your voice of instruction and grace. In your name we pray, amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Today is Ascension Sunday when we celebrate Christ's return to God. We look up in wonder as he lifted from us into heaven. But this is not a time to gaze upward. There is work to be done. Jesus entrusted the ministry of God's love to us. Let's get to work. Let's make our hearts ready for the task ahead with prayer and praise. Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Today I have my son Ryan with me, and we're going to do a little country song of ascension uh, mentioned by Pastor Connie. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Like a bird who 
whose prison bars have flown I days and days.
please join me in the prayer for illumination. Ever rising God, just as you lifted the eyes of the disciples to the rising Jesus at his ascension, so lift our eyes to you as we near your holy word today, that we too might turn our eyes toward the needs of the world and follow in your way. Amen. Our gospel for today comes from Luke 24, beginning in verse 44. Luke 24, 44. Then Jesus said, When I was with you before, I told you everything about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, Yes, it is written that long ago the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed and the authority of his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting up his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him, and they returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple, praising God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, as we recapture the story of Ascension Day, may we be filled with renewed and empowering hope that comes from your powerful message that Jesus is our King. He's with you in heaven, God. He reigns in the Spirit with your authority. Speak to us, we pray in your name. Amen. Well, today is the seventh Sunday of Easter. It doesn't seem possible, does it? The seventh Sunday of Easter. Lance McKimmon says, and I quote, The Gospel of Luke and Acts. The Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts were both written by Luke as one connected story. Written as one connected story. When we look at them together, we see the story of the temptations of Christ and the ascension as bookends to his whole ministry. Before Jesus began his ministry, he spent, seven, he spent 40 days in the desert, being tempted by Satan to live his life on the devil's terms and the devil's timetable. After his resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days with his disciples and close followers before his ascension. End of quote. So I like that. It's like the bookends of Jesus' ministry. The, time, the 40 days he spent in the desert and the 40 days now after his resurrection with his disciples and close friends teaching them. Luke 24 says, Luke 24, this passage is just after the walk to Emmaus. When Jesus appeared to the disciples, when, he got, when they got back to Jerusalem, he appeared to them behind the locked doors in his glorified body of the resurrection. Verse 45 says, Then he opened their minds. He opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And Jesus said, This is what was written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That's what Jesus told them. Let's think about last week. What did Jesus promise he would send? In John 14, 6, 16, Jesus said, I will ask the Father. He will give you an advocate to be with you forever. An advocate, a comforter. So Jesus is preparing something special for them. Luke 24, 49 says, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city, stay in Jerusalem, until you have it clothed with power from on high. They are to wait. Wait. Wait for the something special that God sent to them. Acts 1, 4 says, do not leave, but wait for the gift my Father has promised. So we can read our passage from Luke and then go right into reading Acts 1, verses 1 through 11. Wait, what are they to wait for, and how long are they to wait? Acts 1, 8 says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I'm sure they were anxious to receive this, but how long were they to wait? <clears throat> well, after he said this, he was taken up. He ascended, his body went to heaven. The disciples stood there looking up into the clouds. Where did he go? 
When will he come back? I found this story from, it says, from one of the disciples about this situation in his own words. Listen to the story. He said, just like that, he was gone. We were watching to see where he was going when a cloud came across, and that was it. He was ascended. I didn't want him to go. He left us once already, and that was awful. We didn't know what to do. We moped around. We were afraid for our lives. Then he came back. He came back. He was alive, proving he was alive, telling us about God, and it all started to make sense. All that stuff we'd heard before hadn't, we hadn't fully grasped until he died. And one time we were eating, and he said, Do not leave Jerusalem. I got all excited and said, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He looked at me in, this, in his way, which means, You haven't quite got it, have you? I'm getting used to that look. He said, It's not for you to know the time and dates the Father has set for his own authority. It happened also so fast. Jesus went up to heaven. And we were standing there looking into the sky when we heard a voice. Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. I looked at my watch and was about to ask if they could give an estimated time of return, but they had already gone. So here we are back at Jerusalem. We are praying, we are waiting. Waiting and praying. I can't say I'm not excited about the coming of the Holy Spirit, whatever that might be. To be honest, I'd rather have Jesus himself back. I need him. No one knows me like he does. No one shows me God like he does. But now, more than anything, the world needs him. We need God to send a hundred or a thousand little Jesus going around and spreading his kingdom. Oh God, we need your help. End of quote. I thought that helped us just understand what it might be like for one of the disciples' experience. So the angels were there. Two angels came and instructed the disciples, who were looking up to heaven, to look to their work as witnesses as they wait to Christ. Luke 24, 51 says Jesus was taken up to heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They didn't return sad and crying and weeping. They returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They stayed continually at the temple, praising God and praying. So what's our job? We hear about this ascension. We try to feel what the disciples felt. We look up to heaven. We look up to the clouds. Are we to look up at the clouds? No. We're to look out in this world around us to find someone who needs Christ's help. We are to worship him with great joy, to continually pray and worship him. In confirmation class this week, we studied the Apostles' Creed. And I told them they need to memorize it. They need to memorize this creed because it's the foundation of our faith and it's the history of our faith. So if someone asks them, what do you believe? They'll have it in their head and in their heart. This is what we believe. So that's why we had the Apostles' Creed this morning to remind us of how important that is to our faith. And it talks about the ascension as well as the death and resurrection. So Jesus' ascension is about his presence. It's not about his leaving, but about the one who fills us. It's not about a location, it's about a relationship. And hopefully we all want a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want him to forgive our sins and fill us with him and his love. <clears throat> The resurrection is victory over death. The ascension lifts humanity up to heaven. Because when Jesus went back to heaven, he was in his glorified body, but his body still had the scars. The scars on his hands and feet and his side. So he went to heaven as humanity, as we will. How will we ascend? Just like Jesus. So if somebody says, what are you looking for? Why do you look up in the clouds? It just reminds us to look around to see what Jesus needs us to do. But there's gravity, isn't there? Sometimes things weigh us down. What pulls us down? And I got this from another author. What pulls us down? What do we need to get rid of? Fear, anger, or resentment often weigh us down. The need to be right or in control is a heavy burden. For some, jealousy or pride is their gravity. Some are caught in a web of perfectionism. For others, it might be apathy. Gravity takes many forms. 
What is the gravity that denies you Jesus' ascension? The gravity that keeps us down is not creation or the circumstances of our lives. Gravity is not around us, but it's within us. So as you begin to look at your life and identify the places of gravity, do not despair. The very things that hold us down also point us to ascension. Our participation in Jesus' ascension begins not by looking up, but by looking within. End of quote. So our part of ascension is looking within. Looking within and asking God, what is there that I need to let go of? What is there that I need to give up to draw closer to you, to be in a better, closer relationship with you, Jesus? Acts 1.8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's a promise for us as well, because we are Jesus' disciples, aren't we? So that's a promise to us as well. I like this hymn, Easter People Raise Your Voices. And since this is the last Sunday of Easter time, I chose it, and I love the words. Every day to us is Easter, with its resurrection song. When in trouble, move the faster to our God who rights the wrong. Alleluia, alleluia. See the power of heavenly throngs. End of quote. So I encourage you, Easter people, use your voices to tell somebody what God is doing for you. Use your voices to tell what you are learning from the Bible. Use your voices to tell about your faith. Use your voice to tell about an answer to prayer that you have received. Use your voices to sing and praise God. On to victory, now we go. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this time with you on this holy ground. Place our feet on the path of peace and hope. And Jesus, help us keep our eyes on you. Help us focus our attention to the ministries you have given us. Keep us ready and willing to serve you all our days and to use our voices to worship you every single day to tell others about you in every way we can. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time in our service, we usually share our joys about blessings God has given to us, answers to prayer. So you can share them with the people around you right now. Or you can email me or text me them. I'd be glad to hear from you. We're thankful for all the joys God gives us. Even in the midst of this different world that we are in, we are in God's hands. In our prayer concerns, let's remember all those on our prayer list, especially Clarence Crew. Bob Cummings is in for test this week, waiting for results. Deb Belknap has an unspoken request. Pam Pinkhouse's brother, Greg Piper, is waiting for heart valve surgery. Let's pray for John Langenhan at Crestview. And Gina Hills and her mom, Nancy, her dad, Gary, and her sister, Angie, in their time of need. We'll pray for anyone else that you lift up in your hearts. We pray for all those who are ill, all those who are suffering COVID-19 and all those who care for them. We pray for our church, our community, and our world. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, we come to you in this precious time of prayer. We thank you so much for being our God. You are an awesome God. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being with us every day of the week and every night. Thank you that we can turn to you no matter what's going on in our lives because you care. You hear our prayers from our hearts and our mouths. God, we thank you for answers to prayer. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for giving us what we need when we need it. Thank you so much for your word that gives us encouragement and power to live each day to the fullest. God, we thank you for reminding us that we are in your hands. No matter how this world has changed and what's going on in our lives today, we are in your hands. We thank you for that. And God, we pray for each one on our prayer list. We lift up Clarence, Crew, and Marianne. We pray for Bob and Rosamond Cummings as Bob is waiting for results on his tests. 
We pray for Be Deb Belknap for her unspoken request. For Pam Hinkhouse's brother Greg waiting for heart valve surgery. For John Langenhan at Crestview and for Phyllis in Iowa City. We pray for Gina Hills and her mom Nancy, for dad Gary, for sister Angie in their time of need. We lift up others on our hearts for your touch to be upon them. We pray for all those who are ill or suffering COVID-19, all those who are caring for them, all those in EMS and helping in so many, many ways to help others. We ask that you keep them safe and well. We pray for our church, our church here in West Branch, our denomination. We pray that we will be witnesses to you and God, you've given us new ways to be witnesses to you, even though we can't be here and worship together, but you've given us new ways to minister to others. We pray for our community here, for people that are hurting from the loss of jobs, hurting because they can't graduate like they expected to, hurting because they can't get together and celebrate the milestones of their lives. So we pray especially for our high school seniors and all students and all teachers and faculty and everyone minister to them. Thank you for them providing ways to still carry on. God, we pray for our world in this time of need. So many people are sick and so many are hurting. We pray, Lord, for your guidance to be upon the leaders. We pray that they will seek your wisdom. And God, give us your wisdom each day to know how to live our lives. For our task force for reentry, as they make decisions of when to come back to church and how. Because we care for each person and we don't want to go too fast. We want to do what's right for each one. God, for all those who need your touch, we lift them up. For all anywhere who love you and praise your holy name, who are willing to be your resurrection church, to be your Easter people, we are grateful. And empower all of us with your Holy Spirit to testify about you, to share your love with others. Now let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. With joy and confidence in your abiding love and presence with us, we present these gifts, tokens of our lives, as an offering for service in and to this world which you have entrusted to us. Bless these gifts and bless all those who place their trust in you. Amen. <laughs> Blessed with the knowledge of God's presence with you wherever you are and wherever you go. Serve God by taking care of each other, by loving each other and taking care of God's world and God's creation. May you be blessed by God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.